Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Uh, welcome to everyone who is tuning in for today's Friday Gems. Uh, we hope you're having a blessed uh, Friday, uh, inshallah. And uh, we hope that, uh, inshallah, we are all able to keep our uh, brothers and sisters in Palestine and all of those who are suffering worldwide in our uh, du'as uh, today, inshallah, on this blessed day, when uh, a day that is uh, very important for us to make a lot of du'a, inshallah. Um, it uh, It is great to be back with you all on the Celebrate Mercy channel. Uh, this is our first webinar since we uh, concluded our Rabi al-Awwal programming uh, about 10 days ago. Um, and uh, we're happy to be back with you with these Friday Gems programs. And today we have a beautiful program, inshallah. Um, we want you to take a moment and invite your friends and your family to tune in. Uh, today's topic uh, will especially be relevant, inshallah, with Sheikha Muslima Pramul um, discussing despair and defi divine decree, finding hope in dark times. Uh, unfortunately, our reciter for today is uh, Qari Sinan is not uh, feeling well. He woke up uh, not feeling very well with a fever and a cough. And inshallah, um, what, but we will be playing a recording of his Surat Al-Kaf recitation from a previous Friday Gems. He won't be appearing live, but we do have a recording prepared so that we can continue the this weekly uh, tradition of reciting uh, Surat Al-Kaf as the Prophet ﷺ recommended for us to do uh, each uh, Friday, uh, inshallah. So make dua for, for Qari Sinan that he feels better, inshallah, um, and recovers uh, quickly from... Um, his uh, illness that he uh, that he woke up with this morning, inshallah. Um, so right now, it looks like we have about 77 devices connected. And uh, inshallah, we hope that you can all share the link that you see there on the screen, celebratemercy.org slash Friday, uh, or invite your friends to tune in to our YouTube channel, uh, inshallah, as we are about to get started with the recitation, inshallah. For those who aren't familiar with Celebrate Mercy, we are a nonprofit organization that teaches about the Prophet Muhammad's life and character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through our words and our actions to Muslims and friends of other faiths. And we do this through our programs and our campaigns, our webinars, social media posts, events, trips, publications, and campaigns. We are now a 13-year-old organization, a nonprofit organization. Um, and uh, we're really, really uh, honored to have been uh, serving the community for this long with these programs, especially um, since the pandemic uh, uh, in 2020, uh, we shifted a lot of our programming online um, with these webinars like the Friday Gems programs that you all have been tuning into each and every Friday, um, like the uh, Rabi al-Awwal programming that we've done as well, some of the larger webinars, you can see some of those flyers here. Um, these are all programs in the past three and a half years that we've done. Many of you may have joined these programs and you can catch a lot of these uh, series and webinar recordings on uh, our YouTube channel, inshallah, um, including some of these uh, programs about uh, with commentary on different surahs from the Quran. We also have this course uh, that if you are one of our monthly donors, you can get access to this 40-hour course uh, for free. Inshallah, we have kids programs that you can see on our YouTube channel as well, uh, inshallah. So uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with the recitation portion of today's program, inshallah, and that is with uh, Qari Sinan Hafiz. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce Qari Sinan, inshallah, to our audience before we um, we go to that uh, recitation, inshallah. So Qari Sinan Hafiz was born and raised in the UAE and has loved the Qur'an since he was four years old. He has a master's in business administration. He enjoys 
reciting the Quran and spreading the recitation and praying for the heart, the hearts to soften through the words of Allah. Um, and we are really, really uh, grateful that we have. Uh, I mentioned earlier, if you missed it, that Qadi Sinan uh, woke up not feeling well this morning with a fever and a cough. Please pray for him. Um, so he's not going to be appearing live uh, online for this webinar, but we do have a recording from a recent Friday Gems, inshallah. So we'll be able to um, to play that recording. And don't forget the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that for the person who recites Surah Al-Kaf on Fridays, a light will appear for him from below the throne as high as the skies. This light will help him in the darkness of the day of resurrection and all the sins which he may have committed from the last Friday till this Friday will be forgiven. So with that intention, and also we can make the intention that we are reciting with the intention of uh, uh, Allah giving aid and relief uh, uh, to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, uh, as we recite Quran or even salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ, we can make an intention to help those in need, to help those who need uh, their their burdens uh, lifted from them, and we can do that for our brothers and sisters in uh, in Palestine as well, inshallah. So, uh, with that intention, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the video of Qari Sinan reciting Surah Al Kaf, uh, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll start with the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. Please return your mind and heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll start with the recitation bi-idhnillah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi alladhi أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا حسنا ماكثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جروزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء 
قومنا اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأو إلى الكهف ينشر فأو إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولن تفلحوا إذا أبدا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحدا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثمائة سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا له غيب السماوات والأرض أبصر به وأسمع <تصفيق> ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا 
واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أوفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا أعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها وإن يستغيثوا يغاثوا بماء كالمهل يشوي الوجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إنا لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس وإستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنة مرتفقا واضرب لهم مثل الرجلين جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين من أعناب وحففناهما بنخل وجعلنا بينهما زرعا كلتا الجنتين آتت أكلها ولم تظلم منه شيئا وفجرنا خلالهما نهرا وكان له ثمر فقال لصاحبه وهو يحاوره وهو يحاوره أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا ودخل جنته وهو ظالم لنفسه قال ما أظن قال ما أظن أن تبيد هذه أبدا وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولئن رددت إلى ربي لأجدن لأجدن خيرا منها منقلبا قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره أكفرت بالذي خلقك أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم سواك رجلا لكن هو الله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله إن ترني أنا قل منك مالا وولدا فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح صعيدا زلقا أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا وأحيط بثمره فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها وهي خاوية وهي خاوية على عروشها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا 
ولم تكن له فئه ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولايه لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتديرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا ويوم نسير الجبال وترى الأرض بارزة وحشرناهم وحشرناهم فلم نغادر منهم أحدا وعرضوا على ربك صفا لقد جئتمونا كما خلقناكم أول مرة بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون ويقولون يا ويلتى ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا ويوم يقول نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم واقعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا 
وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما بلغا مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غدا أنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإني نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغي فارتدا على آثارهما قصصا فوجدا عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلها لقد لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إذ قال لا تؤاخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال أقتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهلها فأبوا فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر فأردت أن أعيبها وكان وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا <تصفيق> وأما الغلام فكان أبواه مؤمنين فخشينا 
فخشينا أن يرهقهما طغيانا وكفرا فأردنا أن يبدلهما ربهما خيرا منه زكاة وأقرب رحما وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فأراد ربك أن يبلغا أشدهما ويستخرجا كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تسطع عليه صبرا ويسألونك عن ذي القرنين قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا قال أما من ظلم فسوف نعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء الحسنى وسنقول له من أمرنا يسرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا كذلك وقد أحطنا بما لديه خبرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السدين وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون يفقهون قولا قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكني فيه ربي خير فأعينوني بقوة فأعينوني بقوة أجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكاء وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا <تصفيق> أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا 
قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاء جهنم بما كفروا بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم Jazakum Allah khair to our dear brother Qari Sinan Hafiz. Uh, that actually was a recording of, of his recitation because uh, he is not feeling well today um, and was unable to join us live to recite. So please keep him in your prayers, inshallah. May Allah uh, help him to recover from uh, his illness um, that uh, prevented him from being able to recite with us uh, today, inshallah. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, we're really grateful to you all who are uh, joining us right now. MashaAllah, we have uh, almost 200 devices connected. I know many of you all are watching, uh, not only by yourselves, but perhaps with family members as well uh, or friends. And um, take a moment before we go into the reflections on Surat Al-Kaf with Sheikha Muslima Pramul, take a moment and invite your friends to tune in as well. Uh, to uh, to this program. You can give them this link that you see there on the flyer, celebratemercy.org slash Friday. Uh, or you can just invite them to our YouTube channel where they can tune in live to the uh, live stream. Uh, we are about to start with the reflections on Surat Al-Kaf from Sheikha Muslima Pramul. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, most of you probably are. Uh, take a moment also and click on the like button. Uh, because YouTube, if they see a lot of people liking a live stream, then they will start recommending this uh, live stream to other people who may just be randomly uh, browsing YouTube right now. Um, and also make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so that when we post any videos or live streams, uh, inshallah, you can get notified, especially if you click on the, uh, the bell there, so that you're notified whenever we go live or we post a uh, video, inshallah. Uh, and don't forget, at the end of the program, there will be a Q&A session with Sheikha Muslima, uh, inshallah. So if you uh, want to ask her any questions, you can post your questions in the chat or send us an email, uh, inshallah. And at the end of the program, we will have some time devoted to uh, Q&A with uh, Sheikha Muslima. But we are going to go right into the reflections on Surat Al-Kaf. Uh, this will be for about 20 minutes, uh, and then, um, inshallah, we'll have a couple of announcements and go into Sheikha Muslima's uh, main lesson for today, uh, which is called 
despair and divine decree, finding hope in dark times, uh, inshallah. So let me go ahead and briefly introduce Sheikha Muslima to our audience uh, and then bring her on stage, inshallah. Sheikha Muslima Pramul graduated from the University of California, San Diego with a double major in religious studies and Middle Eastern studies. And after graduating, she studied in Egypt where she completed the bachelor's program in Sharia from Al-Azhar University in Cairo and almost two years of graduate level Islamic studies at the American University in Cairo. And when she returned to the United States, she served the Southern California community through religious programs, chaplaincy, and working with local masajid and organizations. Currently, she serves as assistant religious director uh, at the Majlis, which is a community organization that she and her husband co-founded. They seek to nurture safe community spaces where people can learn and live Islam using traditional sources while acknowledging the challenges of the American context. She is a mother of two and resides with her family in Southern California. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring uh, Sheikha Muslima to the stage, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Great to have you with us. Um, and inshallah, I'll just leave the stage to you, inshallah. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. We'll just start with grounding ourselves in dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Nawayna al-ta'alluma wa al-ta'aleem. Wa al-tadhakura wa al-tadhkir. Wa al-naf'a wa al-intifa'a. Wa al-ifadata wa al-istifada. Wa al-hatha ala tamassuki bi kitab allahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa dua ila al-huda. Wa al-dalalata ala al-khair. Ibtigha'a wajh allahi wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise is due to God, Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessings be upon our master Muhammad and his noble family, companions, and followers. We intend to learn and to teach, to remind and be reminded, to benefit and be benefited, to improve and be improved, and to encourage holding fast to the book of God and the way of his messenger, and to call and to guidance and to direct towards good, hoping for the countenance of God and his pleasure and his proximity and his reward. And peace and blessings be upon our master Muhammad and his noble family, companions and followers. Ameen. Inshallah, today, uh, there are both the reflections from Surah Al-Kaf as well as the lesson that we're going to take later on, I think are very much connected to what we're going through as a community and as an ummah uh, in coping with what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And the first place that I want us to look at when we are reflecting on this difficult tribulation and this difficult test is, um, is actually uh, some verses that deal with the, the young people who were in the cave. And so if we can pull up the verses for the youth of the cave, inshallah, on the screen, um, we're going to just look very briefly at verses 24 through 26. So the ending of the of verse 24, وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَيْ يَهْدِيَنِ رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا You know, to say, I trust my Lord will guide me to what is more right than this. Um, and this is actually connected to the saying of the words of Insha'Allah. Um, I want to read the verses together and then we'll reflect on them together. If we can go to verse number 25. They had remained in their cave for 300 years, adding nine. I'll just read the translation. I realize we have, we're short on time. Say, O Prophet, Allah knows best how long they stayed. With him alone is the knowledge of the unseen, of the heavens and the earth, how perfectly he hears and sees. I'm going to continue the verse. They have no guardian besides him, and he shares his command with none. 
وَلَا يُشْرِكْ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا So why did I choose these verses to start with? Uh, the verses that talk about how long the young, the youth were in the cave. Well, the story of the youth in the cave is one of one of the stories in the Quran that deal with oppression. And it deals with the oppression of these youth because they were be believers in Allah and they literally had to seek refuge in a cave to get away from their people who would have persecuted them because they were standing on the truth, because they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that when they went to sleep, right, and they did not realize how long they were asleep for, when they woke up from their sleep, you know, in order to figure out how long they were asleep and also to get supplies, they advised one another, don't let anybody know who you are because if they know who you are, you'll get stoned. They will, they will attack you, they will oppress you. So this is clearly youth who were oppressed and they sought refuge in the cave from the oppression. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed a very specific miracle to happen in which they were made to sleep for around 300 years, plus or minus nine. And you know, to the extent that when they wake up, they think they've only been asleep for a day or part of a day. They don't, they don't realize that it, the, 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 the great extent in which they were asleep. Now, when they go back to the town, they're still very careful because they think they're in their own time. And that's why they're so worried. Don't let them know who you are or else they will persecute you. Now they go back to the town and the people find out who they are and they realize who they are. And the people are actually believers, right? So by that time, 300 years later, the people recognize who they are and they believe. And after that, they, they live for a period of time. We don't know how long they live after they come back to the town. It doesn't even say it, but then it says that then they died. After that, they died. And they die and the people erect some kind of tomb in commemoration for them. So they're on the, the people honor them after their death. And then after all of this is mentioned in the Quran, these verses are, are, are come later and talk about the fact that they were asleep for 300 years plus or minus nine. Now, when we look at the story of the youth in the cave, they sought refuge. They didn't live in the way that me and you live right, for 300 years, they were asleep. So you could say that they were in a state of minor death, in a state of minor death for over 300 years. They come back to, to, to life, they become a sign for the people. Allah has his wisdom in this particular miracle that we read about every single Friday. And they And afterwards they die and there's a tomb. Now, nowhere in the story do we hear all of the minute details of how the people of that town change and later on become believers, right? What we do hear about is the struggle of the youth in the cave, right? They're the focal point in the sense that they are seeking to preserve their religion. They're seeking to preserve uh, the truth. And they're not necessarily killed, but they're trying to escape opp oppression. And if you were to, it's a particular archetype in which the one who is trying to escape oppression, it's not, it's not, they didn't die shaheed in the sense of martyrdom, but they did cease to exist uh, for about 300 years, 309 years. They're, they're living in a, in a, in a, in a sleeping state as a miracle. On a worldly level, on an outward level, a person can look at this story and say, it wasn't their fault. Like, why did they have to be the ones to disappear from the world for 300 years, right? Why did they have to miss out on their village and their community and their family life and all of these things? Why did they, you know, why did this happen to them when they were innocent, when, when they were actually on truth and the people that were persecuting them were on falsehood? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed this in their story uh, for us to take a lesson from. One, that they were going to be a miracle and a sign. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he let them sleep for 300 years and then uh, and then they awaken and that that's a miracle in and of itself. Um, and they haven't aged. Everyone else, you know, generations have changed, but they themselves have not aged. Uh, and this is a sign of the resurrection, the sign that the one who can do this to people in this life, in dunya, right, then he can do this in terms of the akhirah. All of us will die and all of us will be brought back to life again. But again, on an outward level, a person may look at that story and say, um, you know, they missed out. Somehow it wasn't fair. 
But what we know is that these are people who are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we know is that in the akhirah, these are people whom Allah blessed with a miracle, a karama, and they became a sign for the believers. There is still a sign for us today when we read about them. And so Allah has a wisdom in the different tribulations that, that come our way, even the tribulations of oppression. We see this also in the Quran and other places in Surah Al-Buruj, uh, the people who are the people of the ditch. And we know in this story that all of the people are thrown into a ditch, a ditch that is full of fire, a ditch that burns everyone who's thrown into it. And on the outside, it looks like a genocide, right? The people of the ditch. It looks like a genocide. Like all, if you believe, all of you will be thrown into the ditch. And all a person had to do at that time was even lie and pretend that they didn't believe, but they didn't do that. SubhanAllah. And the entirety of the people who believed were thrown into the ditch. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in paradise immediately after describing the fact that they were thrown into the ditch. And he describes it as al fawzul kabir. That is the supreme success. That is the supreme success. Now, only a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can read that verse and know in their heart that is 100% true, right? That is 100% true. That every single one of those people attained the supreme success. They didn't just attain success, they attained the supreme success. If we were to take, if we were to just imagine al-akhirah, right? This idea of the next life that will, that goes on endlessly. You could say it is infinite, right? Infinity. And you were to take the number of years that you live on this earth. And if you were to do like a mathematical equation, infinity divided by any number, whether it's two years old or one years old or five years old or 100 years old or 150 years old, whatever number you put under infinity is the answer to that, uh, if you're dividing, is infinity. And what that really means is that this life compared to the next life is literally nothing. It's so small. It is less than a drop of water. You know, the Prophet ﷺ described it as if you were to take a needle and dip it into the ocean. The water that's removed from the ocean on the, by dipping your needle in it, that all of that water is more than this life compared to the akhirah, compared to the next life. And so this is why they have the supreme success, because for infinity, they have the highest levels of paradise. For the true life, for the real life to come, they have the highest levels of paradise. We have to have certainty in this reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, tells us about this reality when in, in describing a, another uh, believer who was oppressed, another believer who was killed um, in Surah Yasin. Now, this believer, when he's killed, uh, he says something amazing, right? So he call, he's calling his people to the truth. They kill him because he's calling them to the truth. So he's a martyr. And then immediately after they describe him being killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قِيلَ دْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ Right? So um, it, it, it was said to enter paradise. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ And he said, if only my people knew if only my people knew of how my Lord has forgiven me and made me one of the honorable. So the, the bliss of uh, martyrdom for this man that was standing on the truth in Surah Yasin that's killed because he's standing on the truth, he is, is, immediately follows the description of him being killed. Meaning this is what's truly significant. This is what we need to all hold on to. The fact that the people who are killed in the way of God, we're not supposed to say that they're dead. No, they're alive. They're alive with their Lord in a way that we cannot imagine. And they have the supreme success. We're being reminded over and over. On, the, on a worldly level, we may see something that is horrifying and tragic and difficult and painful. But on an otherworldly level, in the unseen, what is happening to the people who are being killed, the innocent people who are being killed, is they have an eternity 
of happiness with Allah and proximity to Allah that none of us who are just trying to get to that place by good deeds alone can get there. But these are a people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually honored them with martyrdom, meaning they have Allah has chosen them and written for them to be from amongst his most uh, close and beloved servants uh, for, for eternity. And this is, I want to say, eternity is not just some faraway land. Eternity is not some faraway land. Al-Akhirah is not a faraway land. Al-Akhirah, you know, is described to us also by Ali radiallahu anhu. He said, in this life we're sleeping. This life is like we're sleeping, right? But when we die, we awake. When we die, that's actually when we awaken to the true life to come, the real life. The real life is the one that lasts, right? That's the life that all of us uh, are living for in this, in this world. We're not living for this world. We're living for the next life, but we're living here. And so that's something that we're reminded of when we think about the youth in the cave because of the fact that on a worldly level, they had to disappear. No one knew, right, where the, what happened to them. 300 years, they're sleeping. They awaken only to be a reminder and a sign for the people around them. We don't even know what happens between that time and the time that they die, but then again, they die. And did they live a life that way in which they're seeking refuge from persecution? Yes. But has Allah not also honored them throughout time by mentioning them in Surah Al-Kaf that what they had to do in that time was hold on to their faith? And that's what they did. And that's also kind of our test as well, is that the tribulation is going to come and the test is going to come, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking to us, are we going to hold on to our faith? Are we going to be patient in the time of adversity? Are we going to respond to the test in what Allah loves? And we would seek refuge in a different kind of cave, maybe not a physical cave. We would seek refuge in the cave of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nurturing and nourishing that relationship so that it is strong and it is not shaken uh, when, when the difficulties happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes tribulation in the Quran and one of the effects of tribulation often is, وَظَنُّوا بِاللَّهِ ظَنُونَ and they thought thoughts about God, right? To have a bad opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we seek refuge in Allah from this. Uh, the second uh, uh, part that I wanted to just look at very briefly, and again, I think all of Surah Al-Kaf is relevant. Like every verse of Surah Al-Kaf is relevant for what we're going through right now as a community. Um, so I'm just going through some points of reflection. If we can go through, if we can go to the second part, I wanted to look at verses 57 and 58. I will just say in summary, I'll say in summary that when we look at the story of the youth in the cave, there's a story of oppression. When we look at the story of the man with the, the rich man with the garden, it's a story of, you could say, um, arrogant wealth and entitlement versus poverty, right? So there's an economic uh, sort of oppression, or you can say an economic disparity that leads to arrogance, and it leads to um, uh, it leads to a person not being in the way that Allah uh, wants wants us to be in terms of how we re regard our wealth and what we have. So I can, uh, in these, in, in verses 57 and 58, just very quickly, and who does more wrong than those who, when reminded of their Lord's revelations, turn away from them and forget what their own hands have done. If we can go to the next slide. We have certainly cast veils over their hearts, leaving them unable to comprehend this Quran and deafness in their ears. Want to continue? I did. And if you, O Prophet, invite them to true guidance, they will never be rightly guided. I... Your Lord is the all forgiving, full of mercy. If He were to seize them immediately for what they commit, He would have certainly hastened their punishment. but they have an appointed time from which they will find no refuge. Okay, so this is really what I wanted to look at, is that uh, the people who are oppressive, whether they're oppressive because of a person, you know, uh, they're in power and they wanna hurt others, or it's economic oppression, right? They wanna take advantage of others, they wanna harm other people because they feel entitled to because of their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as being uh, un like they they can't even if you were to show them all of the signs they can't understand they can't believe they won't believe and they're going to enjoy whatever they have of this life for a, for an appointed time okay it's not forever they don't get this in al-akhirah they have an appointed term and when that term is up in this life 
whatever they have of power, of prestige, just like the man with his garden is all of a sudden destroyed, right? By, in a moment, Allah's decree descends and everything that person knew of power and wealth is gone, all right? And we have seen this story happen repeatedly in the Quran with the way that Allah has punished the oppressors in the past and the zalimin in the past. When his decree descends, that's it. It, uh, there's no more power for them. There's no more economic superiority. There's no more political superiority. And one of the things I, I think that uh, many people are frustrated with in our time right now is that, um, is how can people not see the truth? Like it's right there. The images are right there. A genocide is happening. Um, we have images after images after images that are of, of, of uh, all of the martyrs from the Palestinian, the innocent Palestinians who've been killed. And, you know, literally, something, the images of the like of which we haven't seen since maybe Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? And when 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 the bombs were dropped on uh, Japan. So like, I, I mean, I should say when, in, in the war with Japan. So the, um, so the point is, is uh, these images that are horrifying, we can see them, people of conscience can see them, people who want to know the truth will see them. But even if you show all of them and with absolute certainty to anyone who has decided they want to follow falsehood, it doesn't matter how many proofs you have, how many images you put up, what you say, how you do it, they don't want to follow the truth. They're not interested in it. We as Muslims, we have a paradigm in which truth is very important. Truth is at the heart of the matter. Truth is about being sincere to God. Truth is a prayer we make all the time. Oh God, oh Allah, show us truth as truth and help us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and help us to stay away from it. So what these verses are saying is that the, those who cannot see the truth, even if you were to show them everything, they're not going to follow it. They're not going to. So on one hand, don't be uh, disturbed by that. Okay, this is also part of the divine decree. Don't be disturbed by that. They have what they have in this world for an appointed term. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot more that I wanted to say, but because of time, uh, I simply can't say it. Um, and so I think the main thing that I want to say is that these times have been prophesized. The times of bloodshed have been prophesized. The times when uh, the foolish amongst us will become the leaders. The times when the hypocrites of a people will actually lead them. The times when uh, oppression will be everywhere. All of these times have actually been prophesized. So we have within our religious tradition, the minor signs of the day of judgment that the Prophet Muhammad has uh, conveyed to us. And when we see those minor signs unfold, even as they are painful to witness, right? Even as they're difficult to witness, we see also within them that God has decreed everything, that God's promise is true, that this is exactly what he said this world was going to be like, that Allah will test us in this life with the loss of lives and wealth and, and the loss of children. Um, but, but this is actually the promise of God. And those who remain patient, right, patiently persevere, those are the, those are the winners. ذلك الفوز kabir. Right, those are the people who will win, whether whether they're the shohada who are in Gaza or those of us here who continuously patiently persevere uh, for the sake of God. Um, that is where the supreme success lies. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who patiently persevere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be of those who trust in his promise and trust in his words. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, to be of those who, who guard over that which is beneficial during times of difficulty. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa